So the next dance we're going to do is actually, uh, my aunt's going to do it, and it's called the blanket dance. And uh, Paula will tell you more about it as she's dancing. As Loren is dancing, think of a butterfly coming out of the cocoon as they grow. Our young women are very precious to us. And this is a story and prayers that she is doing as she comes into womanhood. Womanhood. The shy maiden, faces covered. <coughs> she starts opening her wings. Showing how graceful she is and her respect for Mother Earth. She flies high, looks down on us. She finds the sweetness of Mother Earth. She shows off her glory and her beauty. Just a little add-on. When I lay the blanket down, I actually would lay it down in front of the one that I would like to be betrothed to. <laughs> so it's a kind of a serious thing if uh, someone lays the blanket down. <laughs> and just for the record, I've already been betrothed for 21 years. <laughs> but nowadays, we actually do that dance as a demonstration at powwows and at events like this. Saquon is my favorite time of the year because that is this time of spring. Years ago, after a very harsh, cold winter, Katanawit, the creator, came down and walked through my people's homes and their sites and their longhouses. And he looked and he saw the people, even though there had been a harsh winter, they had told stories during the winter. They had showed the young ones how to work with the quills or how to haft a knife. And they had shared what food they had one with another. They had helped the elderly and the sick. They had shared their firewood. And he decided, my people were so good, the Nahagansit. I'm going to give them a gift. I want to give them something sweet. What can I give them? And he thought about it and thought about it. And he said, I know. I'm going to give them the gift of the strawberry. So he planted the strawberry out into the forest, deep into the woods. And he waited for his children to find it. Well, about the same time, there was a little boy and a little girl who were brother and sister being raised by their grandmother, Nokomis. And they would help their grandmother bring in wood, get the fire going, bring in pails of water, going out, trapping animals and fishing. One day in the spring, as they had finished all their chores, grandmother told them, if you want to go for a walk, you, you may. Just don't go across the stream. So the little girl grabbed her basket, and the little boy took his quiver and his bow, and they walked off. And when they got to the edge of the forest, they turned away to Nokomis, and then they walked on. And all of a sudden, the brother said, stop, look. And up in the tree, they could see a mother bird and her little birds just cheeping and chirping. And they giggled, and then the mother just flew away to try to distract them. They walked a little bit further, and the little girl said, shh, shh, look. And there was a mother rabbit and some baby rabbits following behind. Well, they giggled, and they walked on. 
Finally, after seeing many wonderful things, they saw the red-tailed hawk flying up overhead. They saw the little turtles walking along near the little stream. And when they got to the stream, the little girl said, look, look way over there. There's a huge tree over there. I've never seen such a big tree. And the brother said, yes, but that's on the other side of the stream. And the little girl said, but I want to see what's over with that big tree. And the brother said, but grandmother said, do not go across the stream. Well, they quarreled. And the little girl stomped off, went across the stream with her basket and left her brother there. And the brother was so upset and he just sat down by the tree and he said, well, I'll wait till she comes back. And the little girl walked along. And as she's walking along, suddenly she saw a whole fleet of butterflies floating around. And she turned to tell her brother, but he was not there. She got closer and closer to the tree and she heard a rustle in the bushes and she looked and there was a little fawn nibbling off the fresh green leaves. Finally, she came up to the tree and it was a huge tree and its branches were so wide and it looked like its tip of the tree would hit the heavens. But by this time, the little girl was tired and the sun was high up in the heavens and she sat down underneath the tree and she dozed off and she's thinking, <clears throat> I'm thirsty and my brother's not here and the sun's way up high and she dozed off. <gasps> All of a sudden she woke up, something hit her head and she looked around, she didn't see anything. She thought maybe it was her brother. She looked way over here and way over there. No brother. <sighs> I wish I hadn't left my brother. Now the sun is farther in the west. She dozed off again. Oh, something hit her in the head again, and she looked. And finally, when she looked way up, she saw the squirrels up there eating the last of their winter nuts, throwing down the shells. And she laughed at herself for being so frightened. And as she walked along, she saw Grandfather Turtle. And she said, I need some water. And he just pointed her in the direction. And she went there and she cleared the water and she gulped up the clear, cool spring water. Then she stood up and the sun was even farther in the west. By this time, she had been crying. She said, I shouldn't have disobeyed Nokomis. I should have listened to my brother. And as her tears fell, she looked down and all along this pathway, she saw a great big, red berries with a little green cap on them. And she started to pick one up. She looked at it. She sniffed it. She took a taste and the juice ran right down her chin. She filled her basket with berries, but left other berries there for the next to come along. When she came to the stream, her brother was standing up there calling her name, calling for her. And she said, I'm here, brother, I'm here. And he helped her across the stream, and they shared the strawberries, and they took the rest home to grandmother. And from that day to this day, if you have a quarrel with anybody in your family or a friend, a brother, sister, father, mother, cousin, and you share strawberries, you have to forgive and forget. And that's the gift of the strawberry. I thank you. Thanks for watching. This podcast series is presented by Tomaclog Museum. Visit our website at www.tomaclogmuseum.org. Tomaclog Arts programs are sponsored by Amica Insurance. Auto, home, life, Amica. Support this and other great podcast content at our Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash artway.